someone wanted to know about situs inversus, but for the eye. Of course, situs inversus can occur in other organ systems where you have the heart on the wrong side and other organs on the wrong side. That's not what we're talking about today because we're talking about situs inversus in the eye. And normal optic nerve here with the blood vessels kind of makes this C-shaped thing and the bifurcation usually occurs before it leaves the disc head. So we have the artery and the vein and normally that looks like this. However, sometimes the blood vessel goes the wrong direction. So instead of going temporally, which is what it's supposed to do, you go like nasally first and then temporally. So this we call situs inversus because the blood vessel is going the wrong direction. It's going towards the nasal portion of the fovea of the fundus first and then to the temporal. The reason it's important because that has to be congenital. It cannot be acquired. So we can change the number and the caliber of blood vessels, but what you can't change is the, the direction of it. You, you really can't make it go nasally and then temporally on an acquired basis. So this is one of the features that we're looking for Cytus inversus of the blood vessel, in addition to too many branches, high central branching, too many branches, early bifurcations. These are the uh, features of the blood vessels themselves that suggest that someone who has an elevated and anomalous looking disc actually has pseudopapilledema rather than real papilledema. So if we see this cytus inversus of the blood vessels, it's one of the clues that it's pseudopapilledema.